Okay, besties, today we're gonna be talking about the adaptive immune system, AKA your body's custom built defense squad that doesn't just fight, it's going to remember, strategize, and comes back bigger and stronger. Long-term memory, check. Target attacks, check. Drama, always. Let's get started. So listen up, besties. If your innate immune system is your body's security guards and emergency responders, then your adaptive immune system is the highly trained elite military force. Just like in video games, military strategy, or your nosy on at Thanksgiving, the key to winning a battle is knowing your enemy. So let's break down exactly how your adaptive immune system gets to know pathogens, fights back, and remembers them for life. So every war needs a strategy, and before your adaptive immune system can launch a full-on attack, it first has to figure out exactly who the enemy is. Your immune system just isn't out here swinging blindly at everything, it has rules with what counts as a threat. If these rules weren't in place, you'd end up attacking your own body every single time you ate a peanut butter sandwich. And by the way, this is exactly what happens in autoimmune diseases but that's a whole nother topic for another day. So we start with what exactly is an antigen? An antigen is anything that doesn't belong in your body. It could be bacteria, viruses, fungi, toxins, and even rogue cells that used to be part of our body and have now gone full supervillain, also known as cancer cells. The immune system treats antigens like an embarrassing text that you sent at two o'clock in the morning. You will never forget this and we will hold it against you forever. Basically, if an antigen enters your body, your immune system immediately wants to know who it is, what it's doing there, and whether it needs to be taken down. Now let's say that a flu virus wants to sneak into your body like a sketchy dude trying to sneak backstage during a concert. Before it can find a host cell and multiply inside of it, it's going to run into one of your immune system's best detectives known as B lymphocytes or B cells. B cells are made in our bone marrow and they also mature there. I like to think of it as B for bone marrow so it's easy to remember. They have 10 thousand plus membrane bound antibodies on their surface. Each one has a unique key looking for a matching lock known as an antigen. Now here's the deal. B cells don't just randomly attack. Instead, they roam your bloodstream, your lymph, and your tissues like mall security on a Segway patrolling for any trouble. If for some reason that flu virus was to enter your system, number one, those B cells are gonna start the detection process. These B cells are constantly circulating everywhere, scanning for those antigens because they don't want to attack our own body cells. Once that B cell finally comes into contact with its perfect match, what it's gonna do is it's going to bind to that antigen like a lock clicking open. And that's when your immune system hits the panic button. Once that activation occurs, this is what's gonna start happening inside your body. Number one, the activated B cells are gonna get a massive energy boost and they're gonna start cloning themselves at warp speed. It produces thousands of identical copies all designed to target that same antigen. Because when it comes to immune defense, one isn't enough, we're really gonna need an army. These clones are then gonna split into two different groups each with a very specific job to do. Number one is we're gonna have our effectors known as our plasma cells, and they're like our frontline fighters. Once these guys fully mature, they turn into literal antibody factories. They're pumping out 2000 antibodies per second. Yes, that's correct, per second. They can keep up this insane production over the course of the next four to five days before they ultimately burn out and die like a nursing student who just pulled three back-to-back -back shifts and forgot what sleep feels like. Trust me, that was me in nursing school. So what's their job? Why are they around? Their only mission is to flood the bloodstream with antibodies to mark and neutralize those antigens before they ultimately spread. These antibodies are going to bind to our invaders, making them easy targets for destruction by other immune cells. While these effector cells are out fighting for their lives, a small group of clones doesn't actually join the battle. Instead, they take a different role. They are our record keepers known as our memory B cells. What they're gonna do is they're gonna store the blueprint of the successful antibody that defeated the antigen. 
If that same pathogen dares to return inside of our body, these cells are going to jump into action immediately, skipping that whole learning process and going straight into attack mode. These guys can stick around for years, even decades in some cases. So let's have a discussion. Why is this important? The first time that you get sick, your adaptive immune system is slow to respond because it has to find the right B cell, activate it, and go through that entire cloning process. However, the second time that you get sick, your body already has those memory B cells on standby, and they immediately trigger a faster, stronger, and way more savage immune Immune response. This is exactly the reason why you don't get chicken pox twice. Unless you're super unlucky and it turns into shingles later, don't ask me how I know that. Let's just not manifest that from happening. So let's go back to our B cells, which went full blown manufacturing mode, cranking out tons of antibodies. You're probably wondering what exactly are these antibodies doing? Well, here's the thing. Antibodies don't actually kill the invader themselves. Once antibodies are released into your blood, your lymph, and your interstitial fluids, they immediately start hunting for trouble. When they find that specific antigen match, they're going to lock onto it like guided missiles, getting ready to unleash a full battle attack. A way I like to remember what these antibodies do is NAOC. They neutralize, agglutinate, opsonize, and complement activation. First up, we have neutralization, also known as no touchy. I want you to imagine that there's a virus sneaking around inside of our system, but before it can actually latch onto anything, antibodies are gonna swoop in and they're going to physically block the virus's binding sites, coating it completely like shrink wrap. Now the viruses can't invade, they can't spread, and they can't do anything. They're basically useless. Next up, we have agglutination, also known as stick together, and they're not going anywhere. Bacteria and viruses love to spread out and multiply like kids at a daycare center spreading germs. But antibodies have multiple binding sites, meaning that they can grab onto multiple antigens at once and clump them all together. These massive antigen antibody clumps, also known as agglutinated clumps, are too big to move. They're too big to spread infection and they're way too easy for immune systems to find them and destroy them. Then we've got that good old opsonation known as tag urine. Some bacteria and viruses are sneaky and they try to blend in and go unnoticed by your immune system. But antibodies are not having that. They stick to the surface of these invaders, marking them like a big neon sign that says, destroy me. Now, phagocytes like our macrophages and our neutrophils can easily swoop in, recognize the enemy, and devour them like Pac-Man. And then lastly, we have our complement activation, where we're going to start calling in those big guns. Here's the deal. Some infections are so aggressive that antibodies need to bring in reinforcements. When antibodies bind to an antigen, they trigger the complement system, which is a squad of very specialized proteins that work together to punch holes in the enemy's membrane. This literally blows up the invader from the inside out, causing it to burst. Now let's talk about how your body gains immunity because let's be real. Your immune system is out here playing the long game. There are two different ways that your immune system can become immune to an infection, your adaptive immunity and your passive immunity. I want you to think of it like this. Your adaptive immunity is like taking a self-defense class. You learn how to fight, train, and if someone tries to mess with you again, you handle your business. Whereas with the passive immunity, it's like hiring a bodyguard. You're protected while they're around, but as soon as they're leaving, you're back to that vulnerability state. So let's break it down. Your adaptive immunity is your body's way of building its own army. Your active immunity fights the infection itself, learns from the experience, and creates memory cells so that it's ready for a rematch. There's a couple different ways that it does this. First of all, we have natural active immunity. This is your body's way of saying you earned it. You catch the flu, you suffer through the symptoms, and your immune system learns the enemy's tricks. The next time you get that exact same flu, your immune system is going to recognize this enemy and it's going to shut it down before it even starts to cause problems. We also have something known as artificial 
active immunity, which is basically like the cheat code for your system. So instead of waiting to get sick, you can give your body a controlled preview of the enemy, and that's exactly what vaccines do. Your immune system is going to see either a weakened or dead version of the pathogen, it's going to learn its weaknesses, and it's going to build defenses before the rebattle actually begins. So here's the deal. Some infections are so deadly that you don't want to have that earned it kind of natural active immunity. Think of things like rabies, polio, tetanus, ain't nobody out here trying to catch any of those diseases. So we want to make sure that we have vaccines so that way we can learn from these things instead of having to fight these things. And then of course we have our passive immunity, which is borrowing protection. Now, sometimes you don't want to have to wait for your immune system to build up its army. That's where passive immunity comes in. You can actually borrow antibodies from another source to gain immediate protection. This is also broken down in a couple different ways. We'll start with natural passive immunity. Babies get VIP passes when it comes to immunity through two things, the placenta before they're born and breast milk after they're born. These pre-made antibodies help protect newborns in the first few months while their own immune system is still kind of trying to figure it out. But here's the deal, borrowed antibodies don't last forever. They break down over time. That's why babies eventually need to get vaccines to build up their own long-term immunity. And then of course we have the artificial passive immunity, which is the emergency backup plan of our immune system. Sometimes you're gonna need protection as soon as possible. Like when someone's exposed to rabies, snake venom, or a deadly virus. In those cases, doctors are going to inject you with a ready-made antibodies from donors who have already survived the disease. A great example of this is how Ebola patients survived. They were given antibodies from survivors while their own immune system caught up. So here's the deal. Why isn't this process permanent? Since you didn't actually make the antibodies yourself, you don't get memory cells. Once these borrowed antibodies ultimately break down and disappear, you go back to square one. So let's get one thing straight. Your immune system fights best when they're prepared. That's exactly what vaccines do. They give your immune system a cheat sheet before the real test even happens. So how do vaccines work? Let's say that a deadly virus is out there just waiting to wreak havoc on your body. If you get infected without immunity, your adaptive immune system would have to, number one, detect the threat. That's really a slow process. Number two, it's going to have to activate B cells and T cells, also a slow process. Number three, mass produce antibodies still slow. And number four, it takes time to actually fight back. And by the time that your body finally figures out what exactly is going on, you're miserable in bed, surrounded by tissues, binge watching Netflix and contemplating your life choices. But what if we can actually train our immune system ahead of time? That's where vaccines come in. Instead of waiting for that real virus to ultimately attack, we give our body a practice round so that it's ready to throw hands immediately when it encounters it. There's a three step process when it comes to vaccinations. Step one is we want to create a fake attack. A vaccine is going to introduce a harmless version of the pathogen into your body. This could be a dead virus, a weakened virus, or even just a piece of a virus, like a piece of the spike protein. The key here is that it looks like the actual thing, but it doesn't cause any disease. It's kind of like having a fake mass casualty drill. Everyone reacts as if it's real, but nobody actually gets hurt. Step two is we have our immune immune system boot camp. Your B cells are going to scan these harmless invaders and they're going to go through all the motions. They're going to activate, they're going to start cloning, and they're going to start making tons of antibodies. Meanwhile, those memory B cells are going to start recording everything that they've learned about this invader so that the next time we come into contact with it, we can react much faster. Your T cells are also going to take note as well because they need to get ready to destroy them with any future infected cells. And then with step Three, that's going to be the real test when the virus actually shows up. Let's say that we fast forward a few months from now and suddenly that real virus shows up and we are ready for that mayhem. Instead of the virus catching our immunity off guard, the memory cells are going to recognize it instantly. Within hours, your immune system is going to start pumping out antibodies and deploying those killer T cells. This virus never gets a chance to take hold of your body. 
This is like your body acing an exam because it already had the answer key. And that's exactly why that people who get vaccinated either don't get sick at all or they only experience mild symptoms because their immune system already knows the enemy and wipes it out. So you might be thinking, if vaccines work so well, why do I need booster shots for some diseases but not others? The short answer to this is that some viruses are sneaky little shapeshifters. Some viruses mutate fast, especially the flu. Influenza is constantly changing its surface antigens, meaning that last year's antibodies no longer recognize this year's version. That's why the flu shot is updated every single year because it's a new training round for your immune system against the latest strands. Some vaccines like tetanus don't produce long lasting memory cells. So you need a booster every 10 years to refresh your immune system's knowledge. Other diseases like measles or chicken pox, they rarely mutate. So one to two doses of that vaccine can protect you for life. So why are vaccines important? At the end of the day, vaccines give your immune system the upper hand. They train your body to fight without the risk of serious illness. They prevent breakouts of deadly diseases. And lastly, the most important is that they protect people that can't get vaccinated, like newborns and immunocompromised individuals. And let's be honest, why risk suffering through a disease when you can train your immune system in advance? Now let's test our knowledge with everything that we've learned in this video on the adaptive immune system. And that, besties, is how your adaptive immune system levels up, trains, and fights smarter, not harder. And as always, if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Drop any comments or messages down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where you can snatch up this PowerPoint as well as any other goodies that the store has to offer. And as always, I'm going to catch you in the next video. Bye!